Hello and welcome. In this video we are extending our dry running trading bot by actual real money trades. As a recap here you see the base infrastructure once again. Important prerequisites are my video on setting up the Binance API and of course part 1 of this video series. I will link everything in the video description. Important disclaimer. Cryptocurrency and in specific automated trading is bearing a huge amount of risk and may result in a total loss of your invested capital. Cryptocurrencies are not regulated. Concepts shown in this video are not an investment advice. Video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Additional disclaimer. These videos are for the infrastructural setup. They include overly simplified strategies. Do not see them as ready to use. Alright, let's get started. So this is the notebook from the previous video containing the dry run. And essentially the only thing we have to amend now is to integrate real buying and selling orders instead of those current fake ones here. So first of all I'm going to import my API key and my API secret, which I've stored in another notebook simply for data protection reasons. So this is nothing you have to do, I'm just doing that to protect my own data. So inside this notebook I just have defined two variables here, API key an API secret containing both my keys. Besides that, so I've explained that in more detail in my Binance setup video. Besides that, I'm also importing the client from Binance. So this library is covered in the setup video as well. And then, so execute that of course, and then instantiate the client, passing my API key and my API secret, which is as said, imported from this notebook here. With that, I can execute orders using this client variable here, which I will show you in some seconds how this is done in our current construct. So we are going to execute that again, nothing new here, and get rid of some stuff which we don't need anymore. So we don't need a buying and selling order list because it's all happening in your Binance account from now on, right? It's no dry running anymore. Gotta delete those global variables as well. And then we are going to jump to the buying condition. So this was our buying condition, last price is above the five time steps, so in this case seconds moving average. And here we just have to place a buying order. All right, so I'm going to cut that off here and define my order as client create order Define the symbol, which is Bitcoin, USDT. Define the site as my buy site, of course, and the type as a market order, just for the sake of simplicity. Of course, you can also play around with other order types, e.g. a limit order. Then, very important, quote order quantity, which is the USDT. So let's say I want to invest 200 US dollar per trade. So I'm going to define 200 here. Okay. Okay, let me quickly show you how an order is looking like. Otherwise, it might be hard to follow along. So let's copy paste that outside here. And let's just place a very small order here 10 bucks buying Bitcoin. And this is looking like this. So you're getting some information. And what's important for now is the executed quantity, which is the Bitcoin amount you bought and the price stored here in fills. All right. So this information we want to extract from that order. Very important because these are information we need for the selling order. So we actually need those information. So let's define them right after the order was placed and let's define order quantity. And then just do a flow typecast of the executed quantity. Okay, with that I have my amount of Bitcoin bought, which I need to place my selling order. Okay, we have our order quantity and I also wanna have my price and I'm calling that buy price here. And as I just said, this is stored here. So in the fills part, then indexing for the list and then for the price. 
So also a flow type cast here, then order fills index for the list. And then we got the price. So with that, we are getting our buy price. And this is important because we want to slightly change our selling logic here, right? So I want to just integrate a target profit and a stop loss here uh, instead of this selling condition, right? I mean, you can also work with this selling condition here, uh, but I think it does make that much sense. But I mean, the strategy as said in the beginning is on you. So we are printing out the order when we have placed one, but for now this is the buying order part, but there's one more thing we have to uh, take care of here, very, very important. So the order quantity and the buy price, we have to define as global variables because we wanna ac access them uh, when we wanna sell, right? So I'm going to define order quantity here and buy price as well. So with that, we can access them. Perfect. This is the buying order part. Now selling order. As I just said, I want to use a slightly different logic here. So I'm just going to take my last price and check if it's larger than the buy price times 1.002. So that is simply a target profit of 0.2%. Also, we want to have a stop loss condition or last price is smaller than the buy price times 0.998, right? So simply a stop loss of 0.2% as well. Now, very important, set a pair of parentheses here because you always want to check if you're in a position and then you want to check if one of those conditions is fulfilled, right? So target profit or stop loss. Okay, whenever that is the case, then you wanna set or send a selling order here. So I'm just going to copy paste a bit here. And then symbol stays the same, side is of course sell, type is market. And now very important, you wanna sell your Bitcoin, right? You don't want to sell the order quantity. You want to set the quantity to the order quantity defined in the buying order. All right. In position stays the same here. So we just want to print out the order whenever we are creating a selling order. And that's basically it for this um, very simplified but as said in the beginning, not recommended to trade, just an example. But let's do one more amendment here. So let's increase the simple average to 15 seconds so that we have kind of a trend here. So we're checking that. So what is this doing? Once I let it run, so of course you have to increase the tail as explained in the previous video. So what is this doing? It is buying the Bitcoin. So $200 of Bitcoin whenever the price is above its 15 second simple moving average. And it is selling the coin once it made 0.2% profit or it made 0.2% losses. All right. So let's execute this one here. And now let's fire it. And with that, you see we're getting some output here. And after 15 data ticks, our buying logic is being checked. Oh, sorry, getting rid of those two here. And you see, we are already getting a buying order here as the last price is above the 15 second simple moving average. So we bought here for this price. Let's keep that in mind, 22917.59. And 
and whenever we reach 0.2% profit or 0.2% losses, uh, we are exiting the position. And that's it for this video. So as said, overly simplified strategy, do not use that. For more dedicated strategies, hit the like, subscribe, comment and stuff like that. And I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Have a good one. Bye bye.